Well, hello, hello, hello. My name is Still Black. I still draw stuff, and this is Still Black Draw Stuff, despite me not making anything like this in a few months. And today, I'm going to draw a groovy little plague doctor while I talk about the, uh, <laughs> the wonderful dumpster fire shit show that has been 2020 so far. You guys remember when 2020 was actually kind of fun? It was just impeachment trials, democratic debates, and possible World War III with Iran. Those were good fucking times. I mean, it feels like a decade ago we were talking about whether or not Carol Baskin killed her husband. It's only a couple months, man. You guys remember murder hornets? Yeah, dude. They showed up on the scene like, you know, like it was like the Sand Snakes in Game of Thrones. They showed up looking real cool and badass and they just kind of fucked off, went away, and turned out to be nothing. Man, this year is weird. Dig this, man. I drew this picture like at the start of lockdown, like back in March, right? It's like almost five months ago I drew this damn thing. And it's like jokes about hydroxychloroquine were kind of funny because, you know, the president was trying to push that snake oil when he wasn't talking about injecting disinfectant and shit. But then that kind of died off and it was like a, an old busted ass meme didn't work. Well, hydroxychloroquine's back. They're talking about it again because the crazy, and I can't believe this is a real thing, the crazy pediatrician that believes in demon sex, alien DNA, and reptilian overlords got signal boosted by the president of the fucking United States. That's how crazy this year is, man. <laughs> you know? Oh man, it's hard it's hard to like just not laugh so you don't cry. You know what I mean? But yeah man, nothing nothing has made sense at all. Nothing at all. I can tell you when this shit was about to go down, right? Like they were starting lockdowns in like New York and like writing was on the wall. It's gonna come, it's gonna spread nationwide. Everyone's gonna be staying at home. I just kinda figured I was gonna be shit out of luck. Right? I mean I work as a freelance artist. This is my only source of income is drawing pictures for money. And the way I figured it was if everyone's locked down and we hit like this economic recession, no one's gonna have money to give to some white trash idiot out in the woods somewhere to draw them pictures, right? You gotta tighten that belt, custom artwork and shit, probably the first thing you're gonna cut out of your budget. So I was like, cool man. I'll sit around, I'll make stupid YouTube videos, maybe I'll start on my comic book that I've been trying to get started for like the last two years. I'll have free time and it'll be totally acceptable for me to just sit down and kind of do this stuff. But this is 2020. This is the year where sense jumped out the fucking window head first and crashed into the absurd ground below. Do you know what I've been doing since March? I've been working non-stop. It's one of the reasons I haven't made any of these stupid little YouTube videos. I haven't had free time, man. I have made more money since March than I made my first year as a full-time freelance artist. You know, a few months ago, I did this groovy video where I drew a uh, DIY Voltron thing, you know, sewn together cats. And in that video, I talked about how as a little kid, I always thought the coolest job in the world when I grew up would be to work on a toy line, you know, that I'd get like this creative freedom to just kind of make these characters in this world and be so great. And then I found out that it was actually very cynical, right? It was like this whole art by committee, focus grouped kind of job where as an artist you just feel your soul dying every day, that kind of thing. Well, in March, like almost the day the lockdown started, I started working on a toy line. A client I had got in contact with me, said, hey, we're going to make a groovy toy line. And he gave me the most bare bones information for all the groovy characters I had to make. I basically got a name and a job. Everything else has been up to me. The entire look and feel of a toy line has been up to me. When it came time to do like creatures of different races, you know, different little species, I got no guidance. Those are 100% out of my head. 2020 makes so little goddamn sense that the job that never existed before exists. And I've been making really dumb amounts of money during all of this. It's kind of a head trip, man. But enough about how this weird shit show has been going and how I seem to be warming myself next to the dumpster fire that is the world right now. Let's talk about something a little more fun, which is um, really dumb shit people believe about this pandemic, right? Like all these 
stupid little conspiracy theories. Like when you see the final version of this image, I tried to pack as many in as were kind of prevalent around March and April. You know, 5G antennas, hydroxychloroquine, colloidal silver, this being a bioweapon from the Chinese and shit. There's been a lot more since then. I probably need to sneak in demon seed in here somewhere. But yeah, man, people are just propagating and believing all kinds of nutty shit about the coronavirus. And I mean, weirdly enough, that's the most sensible thing about this year. The whacked out stupid shit people believe is the most non-2020 thing about 2020. Because people always believe these stupid conspiracies. Yeah, I can remember when I was a kid, like, I never learned. I can't remember learning that the JFK assassination was actually part of some grand conspiracy. It was just a given, right? That was just common knowledge. Didn't matter what conspiracy, as long as you didn't believe the official report, you were, you know, quote unquote, right. You know, when I got older, I actually, like, read the Warren Commission. I realized that in order for any of these conspiracies out there to make sense, you have to take information out of the Warren Commission. You have to provide the holes that your conspiracy theory can fill. And then later in life, when I became a sniper in the Army, I realized Dealey Plaza is a fucking nightmare to try and kill a president. The grassy knoll is the dumbest place in the world to take a shot from. And in fact, if I were like a government assassin and I wanted to kill Kennedy in Dealey Plaza, I'd have shot from the book depository, man. Same place Oswald did. Only difference is I would have shot him before he turned on Elm Street because I'm not some idiot amateur. But people have to believe that conspiracy, right? They gotta believe it because the fact that one idiot, a stupid graphic designer, can buy a rifle and change the world with a bullet. Ah oh man, that's a world that's too much chaos. People can't handle that. They need the system. They need order. They need sensibility. 9-11 was the same thing, man. It's pretty evident how that went down. When you look at any conspiracy theory that says it's an inside job, the amount of manpower that you have to have like on board to do this is so unbelievable, considering no one's come forward and said, yeah, dude, I totally rigged the building to explode. Makes no sense that nobody would have talked by now. But people can't believe. They can't accept that they live in a world where somebody chilling out in Pakistan can come up with this plan. You know what I mean? They, they can't handle that. That's too scary. Well, look at everyone's new favorite conspiracy, right? The whole Epstein thing. Nah, man, Epstein, Epstein was a gross pedophile. His little, his little buddy there, I know it's pronounced like Ghislaine, but not Ghislaine Maxwell, also a creepy pedophile. But if you guys think that there's some kind of like organized cabal, you know, that there's like some almost cult-like meeting of people coming together to do this. You're just, you're relying too much on the idea that something this horrible can't be mundane and commonplace. But it is. That's the sad, scary truth, is that if you're rich and powerful, you can go to any city in America and find a teenage runaway. It's that easy. Epstein doesn't need to recruit a harem of girls and pass them out to his friends in some clandestine manner. Any one of his friends can literally go to any city in the world and find a desperate, underage, homeless person. Every other rich, powerful, sick bastard out there has their own Ghislaine Maxwell scoring them some underage victims. And that's the scary truth. There's no way you're going to find some magic box that has all the information that puts all these people away because it's not organized. It doesn't have to be organized. The same way that one dude can grab a rifle and kill a president. The same way that one radical asshole in a cave somewhere in Afghanistan or Pakistan can organize some idiots to come to America and crash some planes. Any, any rich, powerful asshole can victimize damn near whoever they want, whenever they want. Don't need a grand conspiracy. There is no order to this chaos, <laughs> you know? It's a scary fucking world we live in. And that's what the coronavirus is, right? All life on Earth is the result of randomly mutating replicators. And at one point, some crazy-ass bat virus decided when it replicated, a little twist in the DNA, a little mutation made it work on humans. Boom, spread like wildfire. 
wasn't released from a lab in Wuhan. It wasn't any of that dumb shit you hear in Plandemic. It has nothing to do with vaccines or 5G towers. It's just nature running its course, man. That's just... That's kind of the crazy thing, is that, like, so many people, I think, have had a pretty decent, easygoing life where this pandemic is the first time shit has really affected them. Like, everyone kind of felt 9-11, but if you were living in, like, Kansas City, things got weird for a couple days, but then the only thing that really changed in your life is you take your shoes off at the airport, right? Life went back to normal pretty fast. You know, and like I said, the whole Kennedy conspiracy, that's just been a common knowledge. It's been a given my whole life. But it's just like a piece of trivia, you know? If you actually obsess over if it actually affects your life, you're a goddamn crazy person. Even though 61% of Americans believe in one conspiracy or the other, it doesn't really have any bearing on your day-to-day -day life. But this one, this virus... Ah, man, this is, this is fucking it up for everyone. This is a stick in the spoke of your bike wheel. And the fact that it's still affecting people, oh, now it definitely can't be random. Has to be something to it. I like the fact that all these conspiracies, kind of like the whole Kennedy thing, they all can't be right. Right? Like, Kennedy couldn't have been killed by the CIA and the Mafia and the Communists. There's no way they all worked in concert. 61% of Americans believe in a conspiracy, but they don't believe in the same conspiracy. And it's kind of funny looking at the whole coronavirus thing and seeing the same kind of shit. You know, different conspiracies, different ideas about why this is some kind of bullshit or some kind of planned thing, right? This whole thing was created by the deep state to undermine Trump for the elections. You know, I see that one a lot where people are like, I can't wait for this pandemic to end on November 5th or some shit, right? Okay, so it's part of that. No, nope, no, nope, never mind. It's part of QAnon. Trump is using this to root out all the deep state members. But no, nope, no, nope, it's not that. The Chinese released it. That way, our economy tanks and then they can come in and collect on all the debt and own America. Like, nope, nope, it's not that. It's Big Pharma. Big Pharma did it so that they can sell you a treatment. Like, which one is it, man? <laughs> you know? The Big Pharma one cracks me up because it's the same shit I hear about cancer, right? Like, oh, they've had a cure for cancer for years, but they make more money selling you the treatment. They sold you the cure, they only get paid once. What's kind of funny about that is that like the heads of pharmaceutical companies that sell cancer treatment drugs, the CEOs of those companies have died of cancer. Heads of state have died of cancer. You'd think if they had the cure, they'd at least give it to themselves. There's no point in making a lot of money if you're fucking dead, right? Maybe that's part of the conspiracy. They're all alive. They're all living on an island with Tupac and shit. Who knows? But yeah, man, conspiracy theories, they pop up any time that people realize nothing makes sense and that it's all random. The coronavirus is just our our latest one. I mean, that's kind of the whole, like, you know, this... You, you can see that a lot of this has to do with people just being uncomfortable with the randomness, right? That's why you hear the phrase, the new normal. What's the new normal going to look like? Because people need a normal. I mean, normal's an illusion, right? Like, what the fuck is normal? You're listening to this on YouTube. If you're seeing this video, it's because I put it on YouTube. Something that wasn't normal 15 years ago. I drew this on a brand new iPad that I just bought. Like, you know, latest generation iPad using a program called Procreate and utilizing the Apple Pencil. That's three things that didn't exist even when I first started being a professional illustrator. So that ain't normal. You know, our president is a goddamn reality TV star, and reality TV didn't really exist as a marketable thing outside of the fucking real world until the new millennium. There is nothing normal. There never has been a normal, but people cling to it, man. You know, incremental change they seem to deal with, but something big coming along and just smacking them in the face? It's a wake-up call that, man, there never was a normal. 
I think we should all embrace like all the crazy changes we've already seen, right? Like that'd be fucking great. Like all the stuff that the coronavirus has kind of forced us to do, we just need to lean into that shit. Like let's not go back to shaking hands. That was dumb to begin with, right? Like I don't know you, we're strangers. The first thing I'm gonna ever know about you is your name and what your skin feels like. Why am I the only person that thinks that that's, you know, fucking crazy? It's like me and germaphobes are the only ones who think that's crazy. Or how about working from home? It's beautiful. I've been doing it for years. It's awesome. And there are so many jobs where you don't need to go into an office. You know, Twitter is actually going to let everyone that's working from home right now continue to work from home after the pandemic. And why doesn't most of Silicon Valley do that? You know, the reason everything is so goddamn expensive in that part of California is because all these Silicon Valley people moved there. And because they make more money, rent prices went up, which meant property prices went up, which priced out all of like the service workers and shit. A lot of the people that work mundane jobs in Silicon Valley have to travel over an hour to and from work because they can't afford to live there. Like if you make less than 60 grand, I think it is, you're considered below the poverty line. That's how expensive the cost of living is in that area. But that shouldn't be the case because all the assholes that drove up the cost of housing and shit there could easily have always done their job that they do there in Silicon Valley from the comfort of their living room in like Bisbee, Arizona. So yeah, man, let's normalize this shit and have everyone that can work from home work from home. It turns out a lot of these companies haven't really lost any productivity. And if anything, they're probably saving money on the overhead cost of like rent and air conditioning and all that shit for all of their actual on-site places where they make people work. Or having kids, you know, do schooling from home. I would have fucking killed for that, man. When I was going to high school in the late 90s, I would have loved to just sat at home and do my work. Do you know how much time in school I spent just doodling in the back of notebooks because it only took me 10 minutes to learn an hour's worth of schoolwork that the teacher had to go over for all the glue eaters and crayon chewers in the class? Jesus Christ, man, I could have graduated high school my freshman year at like 14 if you let me do it at my own pace from home. I hope that when we come out the other side of this pandemic, people start wearing masks when they're sick. Yeah, I lived in Korea for a year. I remember when I first moved there, I saw everyone doing that, right? You'd go out in public and you would just see Korean people wearing masks. And like in my head, I knew they were doing it because they were sick, you know, and they were just being courteous to everyone else. But because I'm American, it kind of weirded me out. But after living there for a year and only getting sick because of alcohol poisoning, never really getting like the sniffles or anything, I was like, holy shit, this is pretty awesome. Let's keep doing that, folks. Next time you get a cold, rock a mask. You know, the, the normal that everyone wants to return to, the status quo that existed before this year decided to say fuck you to everything. I, I never really understood it, you know? Like, it never really fit right. I was always the square peg getting jammed into a round hole. The world was a board full of nails, I'm just the guy that never owned a hammer. I was making do with a goddamn screwdriver, so to speak. So I've been a little more adaptable than most. You know, even going into this one, I thought there was no way I could make as much money as I was making, which wasn't too much to begin with. I didn't panic. You know, my mind was just like, hey man, we gotta, we gotta adapt. We gotta kind of shift left or right and figure out how to get through this. Now I'm realizing that that's like a skill most people don't have, and maybe, maybe the silver lining to this shitty, horrible year is that people will become a little more adaptable. I mean, Jesus Christ, boomers are figuring out how to use Zoom and Skype and shit, you know? It's kind of magical. So let's not impede that progress. You know, there's nothing we can do about the devastation and the loss of life and the sickness caused by this pandemic. That's a horrible goddamn thing. But kind of the lessons learned and the adaptations we've made and the way we've kind of shifted and changed things, let's keep that going, man. Don't cling to the old normal. Don't try to figure out what the new normal is. Just kind of embrace the chaos, folks. <laughs> 
That's uh, that's the only advice that a uh, white trash idiot who draws pictures for money lives in a horrible little hollow deep in southern Indiana has to offer. Just learn to say fuck it and roll with it because, yeah, there's no sense to this. There's no order. There's no plan. Shit's just happening. And uh, maybe this is uh, this is the first time some of you have had to realize that. But as we bring this video to a close, and we have our groovy little snake oil label plague doctor here. Uh, I'm going to put this up for sale. Now, I'd feel like a complete piece of shit if I were making profit off of this. So any money I make selling this, I'm just going to give to Feeding America. It's a food bank type thing. And considering... Economically, shit's getting worse, and our infection and death numbers are going up right now instead of down. I'm thinking a lot of people are going to have to rely on food banks coming soon. So if you buy this on a t-shirt or anything else, I'm not keeping the money. I'm making enough as is right now, which is still a fucking head trip. So if you guys buy this, I think I get like four bucks for every shirt. That's four bucks that goes to a food bank. I'll put a link to where you can buy it in the description of this video. With all that being said, my name's Black. I draw stuff. And this is Black Draw Stuff. Wear a mask, keep your fucking distances, and uh, peace. <laughs>